the timing was so right on this. It was uh, providential. It was really, it was meant to be. So uh, while it's creating a lot of anxiety between our two countries, it certainly piqued people's interest in coming out. 100% of the people we invited uh, accepted very quickly and showed up. And, and, and the enormity of who they were, it's uh, of the 70 people, uh, 45 of them are among the, the 50, 55 leading uh, uh, business uh, titans of, of Mexico. Rather than giving speeches, uh, soapbox uh, tirades, we had uh, an active spirited discussion on the most critical issues right from the start. That this is a, a relationship that's just below, uh, I don't know, $400 billion trade relationship that's uh, it's grown uh, en enormously. Um, in, uh, in what perhaps had been a, um, an $80 billion relationship and so uh, it before, just before NAFTA. And uh, this is, um, uh, Mexico is one of our very large, largest, third largest trading partner. And uh, uh, this is a relationship that is critical for all kinds of national security and, and commerce and, and trade and uh, neighborliness, uh, regional issues that, that matter a lot. Issues are out on the surface right now with Mexico. We think we can make some great progress. In fact, despite the political rhetoric, uh, and I, I think our, our, our team of Mexican students would agree, that there was a surprising amount of, um, of, uh, of optimism that this thing can be worked through. Since NAFTA, it's been well in excess of a 500% gain in trade. Uh, now, but there was agreement that it's not done. I thought we had a, a, a top um, uh, economic uh, official who was basically the Ministry of Commerce, uh, uh, this would have been a Secretary of Commerce, that was the lead negotiator for NAFTA, Jaime Serra, who happens to also be a Yale alum. Yale was quite active, uh, uh, as uh, uh, were several of the Ivy Leagues, but especially Yale, in the NAFTA design and uh, execution. And I thought he would be defensive. He happens to, to, to lead uh, uh, President Sal Salovey's uh, 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 International Advisory uh, Committee, and uh, in fact, not defensive at all. He was a, a, a champion of what is the next stage that has to be addressed here, but pointed out that if NAFTA were to dissolve and we, walk, we fall backwards into the World Trade Organization to resolve conflict, which would be the fallback, that that would uh, lead to a, a lot of lost issues. I, I will say, that there's a concern that there has been some jobs lost, and some of them had to do with uh, uh, some manufacturing drain, uh, that how could that be addressed? And uh, there was a very prominent CEO in the room from Mexico who said, you know, when a lot of uh, the um, uh, tensions are resolved by, um, if, if we had reduced uh, U.S.-Mexico manufacturing relationships, uh, and we realize that, in fact, it's a lot, most of the U.S. job loss is based on technological displacement and not um, a, a drain of jobs from U.S. to Mexico, then how are people in the U.S. going to feel? And we will have done this damage to U.S.-Mexican relations. There's concern about that. And there's also concern that, however this works out, within the Mexican population, just as we have seen a um, a little bit of a protectionist, if not isolationist, move with Brexit in the, in the UK and uh, in other parts of, uh, of Europe and Australia and places we're seeing some of this sentiment right now is what has happened, France, of course, as we mentioned other parts of, of the EU, uh, is where does Mexico come out on this? I, there's a, an election, I believe, in July where they're, uh, they're expecting that we could, uh, in fact, to our surprise, uh, overwhelming belief we'll see a, a change in a political party, which would uh, be a, a catas you know, a, a, I don't know, catastrophic, it'd be certainly be, uh, or calamitous, it'd certainly be a dramatic shift uh, in, uh, in, in culture, and values, and politics if that were to happen. And, and um, the, um, the, led, the, the verbiage around uh, political change is not explicitly anti-U.S. and trade or isolationist, but, but it's close to it. It's the, the view is we need, we need to invest more in Mexico for Mexico rather than investing in Mexico for trade. So what else can we do? And this is something where people feeling left out of NAFTA in the U.S. as beneficiaries and people feeling left out of NAFTA in Mexico as beneficiaries have some degree of common ground.
there was zero anti-American spirit with, that we could feel with this crowd. And, and of course there was zero anti-Mexican spirit, so some might be some of the self-selection as to who would come to this event, but it's a cross-section of the, of the largest uh, business enterprises of both countries, so it seemed like it's representative. And it, it almost has caught a lot in the business communities of both countries by surprise, the, the tone of some of the rhetoric, because nobody knows of any, of any anger between uh, business partners in either country. This has been a very successful partnership that just needs to, to be addressed for some modernization and fine tuning.